Hello, I'm David Hunt and welcome to Bent TV. My guest today, I'll listen to this, he actually gave me all this information, he's such a bragger. He's an actor and the world has seen his bum and we'll get into that a little bit later. You know, like <laughs> exposing himself. No, it's not porn though, or maybe it is. A singer, a gardener, a teacher, a granddad, and a fine art dining waiter, newsreader, presenter on Joy, Gary Wilson. Hello. Hello, David. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's start because we've got so much to talk about. Um, because you're, you know, you're an old man, so enough we're... of the old. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm older than you, so that's a standard joke between smidge, the two of us. Yes. <laughs> uh, so you were adopted. Oh, correct. Uh, and uh, as a baby. Yes, as a baby. Yeah. Right, okay. I was, I think, seven or ten days old when I was adopted out. Okay. And when did you find out you were adopted? Did your mother or mother and maybe father tell you? Or was yes, it... I've always known. Oh, okay. But it was a family secret. Oh, just with, between the family? Yeah. Right. How did that affect you? You know, like, or because you always knew? I didn't think it had that much effect. I think, um, I think as you say, the fact that I always knew, it was... Just always, that's the way it is. Okay. And what about the secret side of it, though? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I, I, I wasn't encouraged to sort of say that I'm adopted at school or anything and that sort of thing. So uh, that was a bit of a secret. Yeah. yeah. Although a, a pretty nice little <laughs> secret in a way, a fun little secret. Yeah, well, I was told I was special. So. Oh, <laughs> and you are, Gary, you are. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you have met your birth mother. Yes, had a very close relationship with her. I met her when I was in my uh, early 30s, mid to early 30s. Why did you want to meet her? Well, when my first child was born, I thought, nobody forgets that, David. And it's, uh, <clears throat> I thought, well, I need to know because I don't know this child's background uh, medically or there could be something hidden there that I don't know about. Yeah. And yeah. I need to know. And you, you, you had a good relationship with her? You know, like, so how did it develop, that relationship? Uh, well, she, uh, excuse me, it was um, quite an amazing first meeting, actually, because the, the hospital set it up. The laws changed, um, which enabled me to meet her. But uh, when I first went to the social worker to uh, say that I'd like to make connection with my birth mother, yeah. she said, oh, well, we'll see what we can do. And uh, they couldn't give the name, her yeah. name or anything, because that was the law. Yeah, of course. Um, so I went for the interview, we chatted with her, and she left the office for a, a little bit. Yeah. And there was a folder sitting on the table. <gasps> you didn't. I, I was too honest, Dave, but I was oh. just far too honest for my <laughs> own good. She actually left it there for me to have a look oh, at. Oh, okay. And I didn't because I was being an honest person. Yeah. That was a government document. Yeah. So I didn't go there. <laughs> Boy, things have changed now. You know, oh. People would have been taking photos and everything. <laughs> the law changed a couple of years later yeah. and there was a, uh, a reunion between my mother, my birth mother and, and myself. How did she react? Have you had this conversation, or did you have the conversation, uh, about wanting to meet you? Yes, well, there were letters sent between us and uh, the fact that we both wanted to see each other. And when we first met, it was an amazing... I came with a bunch of flowers and a few photos oh, of the kids and all that sort of thing. Right. And she had photos of my two sisters. Oh. I'd never met... I didn't even know I had oh. two sisters. Oh. So, uh, and when we met, she... First of all, I was raised in a very loving family, but not a huggy family. Right? Oh, OK. Not one that's sort of hugged and that sort of thing. First thing she did, there's me, six foot two, and her a little bit shorter. She just grabbed me and said, I'm oh, never letting you go again. Oh, oh and it was, gorgeous. Because she never knew what happened to me with during yeah. the Vietnam War. I yeah. could have been a soldier. Yeah. I could have died then. And yep. she just said, I'm never letting you go right. again. Oh, how beautiful, Gary. And, yeah, we're all both in tears. Yeah. So it was just oh. beautiful. And what about um, the, the mother that brought you up? How did she react uh, when you said that you wanted to <coughs> meet your birth mother? I delayed that. <laughs> oh, so you did it after? Yeah, I didn't tell her immediately because uh, I knew what the reaction would be. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you found your real mother, you don't love me anymore, yeah, and this yeah. sort of thing. And yeah. that's what happened. Right. I uh, let it go for another couple of years and I was just, it was eating me up inside. I had to tell her that I'd found my birth mother. And You're getting a bit emotional now, aren't you? Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. It was a, a very emotional time. Yeah, but uh, we got through that. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I said, look, you are my mother. 
you're the one who brought me up. You're the one who fixed all the, the scratches and scrapes of my, my childhood. On. Yes. <laughs> and uh, kissed me goodnight every night oh, for all, yeah. that, all yeah. that time. Yeah. And uh, I said, you are my mother. Love doesn't divide. Mm. Love multiplies. Yep. Oh. And that's that's what happened. Uh, and my uh, my son said the perfect thing. Oh, I've just got a third grandmother. Hey, hey. <laughs> right at Christmas time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you mentioned a son. Yes. You got married. Yes. How um, old were you when you got married? I was um, 26. Right, okay, which is a bit late. A bit late, for, especially when I was living in a country town. Right. Uh, Where, whereabouts? I was in Seymour. Right. I was working at uh, Seymour Technical High School as uh -huh. a teacher. A teacher, yeah. And uh, I met uh, my wife as a teacher as well. And that was <laughs> the kids were funny. Because I'd been at the school for like about three or four years. Yeah. And got myself well established there. And uh, they say, what are you marrying old Mr Wilson for? Old Mr Wilson was 26. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what kids, say no more. How did, how did that go? You had three children. Three children. Two, two girls and a boy. Yep. Did you know through that period that you might have been gay? Well, I'd sort of seen myself as a maybe bisexual. Um, I had had an attraction to, uh, to men but not carried through. Uh-huh. And, yeah. and that was that era, wasn't it, where mm. you couldn't, you know, it was hard for in society to actually make that mm. breakthrough to actually say, well, hold on, I'm, I could be a gay man. And yeah. society pushed you into mm. probably marrying. Not so much pushed. I fell in love with, uh, with my wife. Lovely. And she's a wonderful woman still. We still have a good relationship. But, Fantastic. Uh, we're, obviously, we're not living together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But uh, when we get to family gatherings, it's always cordial, always friendly, and yep. I have every every admiration for her because she actually defended me after the the breakup. Oh wow! And because uh, uh, as when any family breaks up, they blame the kids blame so oh dad left and dad did this and yep. he's left us this and da da da. Yeah. And uh, my I found out that my ex wife said to the kids, well, he's the only father you've got. Oh, no. oh, that's lovely. No. Well, let's talk about that. So when did you realise, um, how old were the kids, how old were you, when you decided, mm, I've got to make this, you know, like break, mm. I've got to actually come out? Yeah, it was, uh, my kids were teenagers. Uh-huh. And it was a very difficult time. I, I, it's more well, teenagers, mm. say no more. And uh, one was at university and, uh -huh. and uh, that sort of thing. So it was, um, yeah, I was going through my own internal issues and I just, I was more and more attracted to men than to women. Uh -huh. So it, was, it, it just overtook me basically. And I, uh, yeah, I, I needed to be sure and I was. And I thought, well, what can I do? I went through a very dark patch. Uh huh. I'm and, sure you did. And yep. I'd sort of had dark thoughts, as you yep. might imagine. Yep. And I went through a time when uh, I met a guy in a toilet, actually, if we talk <laughs> sort of bluntly. Um, <laughs> and we just met the ones in a toilet. He was, uh, and we had coffees after that. And he was talking through things with me. He had an ex-partner who was dying of an AIDS-related illness in oh, Sydney. Okay. And we just had lunches together in the in the CBD in Melbourne, and uh, I was going through this marriage issue, and he said, "Well, marriages break up for all sorts of reasons. This is just one of them." That was the turning point for me because I thought, "Well, yeah, it's breaking up of a marriage." Yep. And that when I when that night of the breakup, when I told the kids and my ex, my now ex-wife, you did it all at the same time. Yep. Wow. And uh, the kids were more um, troubled by the breakup of the family, which is quite understandable, mm. rather than the gay thing. Yep. But I told them I was gay as well. That right. was the reason I was breaking up. Right. Why didn't you go to your, um, your ex-wife first and tell her and then the kids? Why do it all together? I told my ex-wife first. Oh, she like, did know. Right. Uh, and later that night, yep. I went to each of the kids in right. their bedrooms. Okay. Wow. A very surreal, traumatic evening. Yeah, I could imagine, Gary. Did you stay in the house that night? That night I slept in the spare room. Right. And then threw clothes and suits and goodness knows what else into the car and drove off. 
and you and the kids sort of had a trouble with with you for a little while after that. It was rocky. I won't sort of mention names, but one child thought it was great, and it was actually went to a, a gay club with me and in, enjoyed. Fantastic. That. And we danced together and all that sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. Um, another child blamed me and thought um, that uh, there, there could be some reconciliation. No, obviously. Um, yeah, and it was rocky times. And it swapped around too. It wasn't just that one child saying, it's all great fun, um, and I wasn't invited, or oh, my partner wasn't invited to that wedding of that child either. Oh, okay. So it changed from being a great thing mm. to having issues with. Which happened a lot, didn't it? Mm. The partners were, weren't recognised. And was it that same same guy, the the one that you met from Sydney, that you were in the relationship oh, with? Oh, no, no. That, that was very much a friendship. Right, okay. Yeah. How did you go through those, those, those years, you know, like the, the relief, the weight off your shoulders? You know, like, explain to us what it was like when you realise that I am a gay man and this is the path I now need to take. Kid in a candy shop, David. <laughs> <laughs> Kid in an actual candy shop. I just, I was out. Yeah. And oh, I'd... I can imagine. You know, the feather <laughs> bowl was running down the street. You're like, I'm gay, I'm gay. <laughs> No, Not I don't quite. think I had a feather bow. No, <laughs> but that was a bit later on. We won't go there. Uh, but uh, it was also um, sort of happy, sad, because the friends that I had when I was married, oh, yes, of course, sided with my wife because mm. I was the one who left and she was the one stuck with the kids and the yep. mortgage and all that sort of thing. Yep. Um, and so I didn't have any friends. So I had to build a friendship circle. Yep. yep. And that was that was quite easily done because I was out. Yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. meeting people, and and you were uh, going to the clubs and bars. And, yeah, yeah, and, and uh, it would have been before social media. Yeah, yeah, and just joining things. I yep. think that's a thing that um, uh, a lot of people who come out um, don't do, or especially back in uh, that day, uh, that they they didn't sort of join things. And I think it's so important if you're coming out and you haven't got that friendship circle. Join things. There's plenty of clubs, everything from sporting clubs. I went to a gay canasta club once. <laughs> oh, my God, you are so gay. You are so gay. It was, uh, yeah. So the things are out there and all you need to do is take that step and get yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. can be hard for some people, though, mm. that obviously you are you know, like smart enough to do it. What about in your teaching life um, as a teacher? Did you come out there? Not as a secondary school teacher. But I did uh, TAFE teaching as well mm. and definitely as a TAFE teacher because they're all adults mm. and uh, there was... Uh, there was so you would time. openly say, you know, like... My partner and I, yep. my boyfriend, or yep. Yep. I've been to a gay club last night and had a great time and yep. that sort of thing. When you said you, you join clubs, what sort of clubs, you know, like you're a singer, you're an actor. Oh, we've got to throw in the actor bit, you know, like where I... <laughs> where I mentioned where I've, I've seen your bum in a movie... <laughs> Many uh, people have I, but Hey, it was a very big movie. So you became... Not because they have big bum, but... Huge, like it took up the whole well, screen, people. Dave, please. Um, it, uh, it was from a... a you know, in this movie in particular that we're talking about, uh, from a famous book. Mm -hmm. What's the film called? Holding the Man. Holding the Man, wow. Mm. You couldn't have been in a more important film for a gay man. It was an absolute... Uh, honour to be in that, that movie. I only had a little bit part. A, a, a little bit cheeky part. <laughs> a bit cheeky, you might say. Uh, there were two shots of me. One was uh, when I was walking down the corridor hanging onto a, a drip thing. Because you had uh, you were an AIDS patient yeah, in a hospital. Acting yeah, acting as an AIDS patient. Yeah. And that was the first scene you saw of me with Anthony LaPaglia sort of walking past me. And then there's a, a face-on shot as I'm sort of walking back the other the other way. Right. So my face actually got onto the thing. And I'm in the credits. <laughs> and you're in the credits. <laughs> uh, so, and you did that for a while, didn't you? Uh, yes. Being an extra in films. Yep. Yeah. Most enjoyable. Right. Good fun. Okay. Uh, you don't do it anymore? It's... No, I'm thinking I might get back into it. Yeah, because they're looking for old, old men now, I hear. Like us. Mm. <laughs> oh, boom, boom. <laughs> uh, but then uh, you got involved in singing. Yes. Uh, can you hold a note? 
Uh, as long as I'm in a group. <laughs> in I'm other in words, choir. you can't hold a note. I'm in a choir for a reason, David. <laughs> what's, what's the choir? It's called Low Res, right. Low Res Men's Choir. And now it's a men's choir, but you don't have to be a gay man to Definitely be in not. it. No. Yeah. So it's not like the gay and lesbian choir per se. No, we don't identify as a gay choir. We are a men's choir and we have, uh, we have you know, a token straight guy. Right, not token ones. Token <laughs> like, one. A lot of people have token gay people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you got involved in that because you were, you got involved with a radio station. Uh, mm -hmm. What's the radio station? It's Joy 94.9. Right, I think LGBT. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah, it's been around a while. Uh, now you went on there as a presenter. Mm, a newsreader. Uh, yep. a, oh, a newsreader to begin with, was yep. it? Uh, and you're still involved in the news um, department yes. now, actually... which you tried to get rid of, but then <laughs> it came back and went, hey, hold on, you're not yeah. getting away that easy. I'm back as news director. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but you also do a bit of on-air on stuff every yes. week. Yep. Uh, is it just Friday afternoons now? Friday afternoons, yeah. Yep. And you have to put up with me when and I appear and I pick on you, I Hand start picking. Handball you. And you've been involved in Joy how long? 21 years now. Wow, 21 years. When was I that first what came out? That was one of the things oh, I first went to. Okay, I was just about to, to ask you that. Uh, why, why a radio station where all of a sudden people are going to know who you are? You can't hide. Mm. Well, I was out. <laughs> <laughs> out and loud. And, and you didn't mind who knew. Well, a uh, funny way it came about was yep. um, I was in a uh, work choir for work and we sort of did the teaching, institutions. Teaching, teaching. No, I was with uh, Disability Services at okay. that stage in government yep. as a project officer. And they, we did sort of gigs around at the, uh, the institutions when the institutions <laughs> were there. Um, and I was in the tram going up uh, Collins Street and the one of the guys in the choir said, oh, you've got a reasonable voice, would you like to go into radio? And, uh, and, and then I said, oh, yeah, I'll give it a go. And I knew it was an LGBTI station. And inside... Did I, you know about it before? No. You didn't know, no. yeah. And inside, one of my life's ambitions was, yes, I'm going to be on radio. Yes, yes, yay. <laughs> so I just kept my cool. Said, yeah, I'll give it a go. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> 21 years later. Uh, and why the news department? That's where the vacancy was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you, know, like, was, you weren't inter that interested in the news per se uh, was where the vacancy was. I've been a bit of a news nut anyway. So yeah. I've yep. always followed news and yeah. uh, kept up with things. Well, and I even made a comment to you the other week that I'd been picking on you uh, before and, uh, and then I heard your last news report before I was on air and um, you did a really good job at, with... Uh, compassion, but with a, um, a sense of humour, uh, and uh, yeah, it was a, a very good news read. So congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Well, we uh, need to get the serious news across, but yep. let's have a bit of a laugh as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and uh, and that's what you know, like uh, joy is about. But then, unfortunately, the uh, just the general show that you do on Joy is pretty bad, and they put you on. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, that's well, I could say something about other people's shows too, but mm. I don't. I'm not that sort of person. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> uh, <right now. laughs> but the interesting thing, you've had quite a few little ventures along the way at Joy, and that's a really good thing because mm. you had a gardening show at one stage, didn't you? Yes, I still do a gardening segment, but there was a, an actual show I did with Andy Kay uh -huh. and that was a lot of fun Yeah, because I like my gardening. You, you do. Now, you you know, like many years ago you lived in an apartment and then you had a house where yep. you, a garden and I, I came oh, there a couple it. of times yep. and it always was a nice garden and that's where the real interest got going, wasn't it? That's where I could actually get my hands in the dirt and really enjoy myself. Yeah. yeah. So what, what happened? Because then yeah. you sold that house. You now live in an apartment. Uh, plants, have you got any? Uh, I've got two balconies and they're well forested. Okay. <laughs> and one of the things that attracted me to the apartment block was they have a community garden. Oh, and on the roof or? No, in the uh, sort of the open area in the... In the on the uh, middle or something. In the middle of the, uh, the apartment okay. block. Okay. Right. And it's great. I love it. Yeah. And that would actually, you know, like mm. get you involved with other people, getting to know the other people yes. in the in the apartment block yeah, as well. Cool. Here you are, you know, like you've got your, your choir that you sing in um, mm -hmm. oh, and over the years you've played a bit of sport as well. Um, yep. so, so what is it? Stiletto running? And, you know, <laughs> no, no, it's actually volleyball. Volleyball. <laughs> right, and I was okay. in a competitive volleyball um, before I uh, 
I came out. Yeah. And one of the uh, the ways to socialise was to join the uh, the spikers, the gay volleyball team. And they're they're very popular too. Oh, aren't they're they? great. Yeah. yeah, great group. And why don't you still play with them? Uh, I'm quite a bit older. You're too old, may put. <laughs> Not sense. too old though. A little bit older. A little Let's bit older. Right. Too old, may push you out the door. Now, yeah, like, no, see you, don't. mate. See ya. They're very accepting of any age group. They even have you, Dave. Oh, hey, they must be really desperate. <laughs> uh, so you know, like here you are. You've got. You've, you've had the sport, mm-hmm. and you know what I really enjoy is that you've you've actually done so many things on this journey mm. of, of being a gay man. You know, like you really have done. So congratulations on that because, you. As, as you said, a lot of people just sit there and go, oh. I don't know what to do, you know, like, and how, how do I get mm. involved? So, so there's the choir, there's, there's joy, there's so many other little bits and pieces that you're involved in. Is there anything that you've thought to yourself, I still want to do that? Not really. Really? I, mean, I live a very fortunate life and I'm very happy with life at the moment. Right. Oh, good. Well, mm. well, that that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, what about travel? You, you you like to travel. You get overseas. I do You've travel. got a son that lives overseas. Is yes, that right? Yes, my son lives in Switzerland. Right. And uh, How did I, he end up there, just out of interest? No, uh, it's his job. Right, okay. Yeah. So wow. He was uh, headhunted and wow. got to uh, Switzerland. He was in uh, in Sweden Yeah. and then uh, moved to, uh, to Zurich. Right. And have you... Visited him there, yes. yeah, yeah, and you're going back again. Will Definitely, you? I plan to this year. Right, and my ex-wife's there at the moment. Right, and, okay. Uh, she beat me to it. She beat you to it. <laughs> right, <laughs> okay. So congratulations yeah. on this brilliant career, brilliant life, uh, and enjoying life um, as an older yes. man, much older man. <laughs> And you're much older than me. I had to get that last thing. Yeah, yeah, you had to get in. <laughs> hey, and I love teasing you as well. So, Gazman, as you know, and uh, on a lot of your shifts on Joy and then yep. uh, you know, Gary Wilson yep. uh, when you're reading the news, uh, thank you so much for sharing your story today. Absolutely There's so much pleasure. more that we could have spoken about, but your journey... <laughs> you have to censor it. <laughs> yeah. Your journey, oh, oh, volume two is coming out. Uh, <laughs> But your journey from uh, adoption, finding your your birth mother, the marriage, you know, the breakdown of that because of uh, obvious reasons. Re- yeah, I, like, I, I think you're awesome, Gary. So thank congratulations. You. Thank you, Gary Wilson. Thank you for doing this little show with us called Bent TV, and you're so Ben. <laughs> and proud of it. And proud of it. <laughs> I'm David Hunt, and we'll see you again real soon. See you later.